Hello, I'm Leslie Kenton, and I want to share with you something that I find pretty surprising, which so many seem to experience on Cora Romana. You know, to be fully alive, you must be who, in essence, you are, for who you truly are is far more interesting than anything or anyone you might aspire to be. Sadly, I think this is something that most of us forget. I know a lot of times in my life I've forgotten it. Now, thanks to the diencephalic changes taking place in the autonomic nervous system to the body and the brain and the hormones, the Karamana journey is a time in which we seem to be offered the finest opportunity I've ever come across to connect with the true nature of our own being, if of course we choose to take it. On a physiological level alone, the changes in the appetite and fat control center in the brain, well, they seem to invite this kind of transformation. Let me tell you a little bit about this center in the brain, and let me use Simeon's words to describe it. He says, quote, Very deep down in the massive human brain, there's a part which we have in common with all vertebrate animals, the so-called diencephalon. It's a very primitive part of the brain, and it has, in man, been almost smothered by the huge masses of nervous tissue with which we think, reason, and voluntarily move our body. The diencephalon is the part from which the central nervous system controls all the automatic animal functions of the body, things like breathing and heart rate and digestion and sleep and sex and the urinary system and the autonomous or automatic uh, vegetative nervous system and, of course, via the pituitary, the whole interplay of the endocrine glands. And therefore, the Simeon's words give you a little idea of just how incredibly uh, complex uh, that center is. Well, the Kuramamana transformations no doubt begin as physiological and functional alterations in diencephalic functioning. Yet why they happen so much more easily on the Kuramamana we use now than they seem to have done on the original one, I don't understand. Has it to do with the vibrational nature of the essential spray, which, together with the dietary protocol, may be affecting not only the physicality of the body, but also its energetic aspects? These are some of the questions I keep asking myself. In another of Simeon's books, called Man's Presumptuous Brain, he explores interesting conflicts which can take place in civilized man between the primitive instinctual diencephalon area of the brain and our highly developed cerebral cortex from which we do all our rational thinking. These are conflicts, Simeon points out, which often result in illness. Okay, I've come to suspect that Kara Ramana helps create a finer balance between our cool, rational, conscious mind and our rich, primitive, and instinctual animal nature and thereby creating greater harmony between body and mind. For if we live in a cerebral intellectual culture, which pays too little attention to the importance of connecting with our essential being, our, our soul, if you like, then so many of our potentials for expanded consciousness, tapping into higher levels of insight, of joy, of bliss, they too often remain dormant. Anyway, whatever's going on with people on their Kara Romana journeys, it's pretty amazing for many. This is how Mariana in England describes it. She, she, shop, shed, she shed, hard thing to say, 19.8 pounds on her program, and she says, and I quote, Kara Romana has completely transformed my life. I wake up every morning energized and blissful. I'm more aware of everything and everyone around me, and most important of all, I'm more aware of my own needs and of myself." End of quote. Well, to me, it still remains a mystery, but it is a beautiful one. Thanks for listening.